The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Deborah Fraser, author of the newly published book, On the Day You Were Born, is our guest today. She'll be talking with Children's Services Librarian Pamela Holt about the book and an exciting new artistic collaboration with Heart of the Beast Puppet Theater. Sandra Spieler from Heart of the Beast will be with us also. They'll be discussing how an author a theater company works together to transfer a literary work into an artistic work of puppetry. Welcome. It's great to have two artists here on the set of All About Kids. Both of you are very unique and diverse artists, and I'm curious about your backgrounds. Will you tell us something about yourselves? Tell me something about yourselves. Deborah Fraser. Well, thank you first for having us. And I am primarily a visual artist who has built both very large sculptures and small intimate sculptures primarily out of different kinds of textiles. And the last large sculpture I did was a four acre project where people walked through it and picked up little pieces of paper that told about wind. So it essentially was both a piece of sculpture and a book. And when I finished it I thought, this may be the hard way to do a book. <laughs> and so. <laughs> That, uh, I had some time pass and went through a very difficult pregnancy and some time abroad and came back to this country wanting to write some kind of book that put a holistic picture of the world in children's hands. And I started in the midst of this difficult pregnancy putting together this book that has brought Sandy and I together. So the book is called On the Day You Were Born. And uh, it is made out of paper cutouts. All the pictures are pieced together bit by bit with just scissors and paper and glue. And it um, begins on the front, you see one side of the world, and then on the back, you see the other side of the world. And should I read a bit of it? I'd love to hear some of the yeah. book. Well, it's important that you know that you actually see the end papers to this book because it ends up having a lot to do with what happened with Sandy. Uh, it's the blue of deep space with the yellow stars. And open it up with a kind of invocation that calls the animals of the earth. And it begins, On the eve of your birth, word of your coming passed from animal to animal. The reindeer told the Arctic terns, who told the humpback whales, who told the Pacific salmon, who told the monarch butterflies, who told the green turtles, who told the European eel, who told the busy garden warblers, and the marvelous news migrated worldwide. The story begins with the gathering of the sun and the moon, and then it goes on to reveal all of the, not all, but a handful of the phenomena that are happening around the planet on the day a child is born. And two of those I'll tell you. On the day you were born, the round planet Earth turned towards your morning sky, whirling past darkness, spinning the night into light. Mm. And that is the picture that's also on the cover. And then. On the day you were born, gravity's strong pull held you to the earth with a promise that you would never float away. And there is gravity and the center of the earth holding on to everything that grows and walks upon it. And slowly the book goes through, phenomena by phenomena, how the world is prepared for the arrival of each child. And that is my book. <laughs> That's incredible. 
It's, it's wonderful. And then we go from a visual artist who's created a book to a theater artist. And Sandy, what is your background and what brought you into this project? Well, I'm primarily a visual artist and a theater artist. I'm a puppeteer, puppet and mask wearer and performer, director. And um, the form of puppet and mask theater uses visual art as one of its primary theatrical functions. And um, I work with a theater company called In the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater. And Deborah came and presented her her book to us and wondered whether we would like to be part of its opening reading and she read the story and we said well of course we would and mm -hmm. now that's history. Well, we had this idea that I would have some kind of publication reading at the theater that the um, Heart of the Beast has on Lake Street in Minneapolis and I envision a one night short some kind of benefit um, for the theater. Well, Sandy liked everything except the short part. <laughs> and so we have ended up taking this into quite a show. But um, we brought some pictures of the theater just to help you see why I would have chosen this particular theater out of all the possibilities here in the Twin Cities. So I'd like to see the slides. Heart of the Beast has such an extraordinary reputation in, in the city of Minneapolis for you've just acquired a home and um, I'd love to see some slides. Sandy, can you tell us a history while we look at the slides? Our theater, which is on a, a busy street in South Minneapolis and is known as In the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater, actually has several different arms of its work. One of them is an outreach arm which does many educational events teaching people how to make puppets and masks and helping communities produce large shows within their home community. We also do shows indoors for uh, family and adult audiences and we also probably are best known for our big events with really big puppets. An example here, this particular slide is from a show which we did called the Circle of Water Circus in which we took a huge company of people, 25 adults and 5 children, for 6 months down the Mississippi River basically performing a circus with very large puppets talking about water quality. We used a style of uh, theater which was very circus-like. Here are deer on stilts. The show began with a grand procession of natural life. We also do smaller puppets as well. Um, indoors work for both adults and children. And one of the most famous events in Minneapolis for us is an annual event which we do called the May Day Parade and Festival in which hundreds and hundreds of people come and build various puppets and masks as part of a storytelling parade and then pageant in a local park. Uh, I think one of the hallmarks of our theater is that both we are artists and we work as artists, but we also work as citizens who are very, um, very much citizens of our world planet. And our shows do have, a lot of the shows have environmental content as well as celebrating the courageous acts of ordinary people and um, oftentimes May Day or as overriding themes in many of the shows is how very, very simple things, very simple people, simple thoughts, simple actions are actually quite splendid and miraculous, which is one of the things that we particularly liked about On the Day You Were Born, these phenomenon which we take for granted, which are actually very splendid. It's understandable, philosophically, why the two of you artists um, found each other. Um, with how did you take your ideas and your artistic vision and make a production? I'm curious, how did it work? How does one, how does one cooperate with one's individual vision? Well, first, I, I should say, I had this idea for a benefit, which quickly turned into this idea for a play. and. Sandy, we started meeting with, and all the people involved in this project, it, it's a very um, child-centered book, 
and all the people happened to be mothers. That wasn't a criteria, but it is how it happened to work out, which means meshing many daycare schedules to have even the smallest <laughs> meeting. And that was our first challenge, was figuring out how do we meet. And so we often met with children and mm -hmm. milling around the theater or our homes and slowly started talking about the book. You might start with this. Well, some of the initial brainstorming was about doing um, a book or there's this book that has two parts to it really, which is the poetic telling and then the more scientific telling of these incredible phenomenon. And so um, pretty early on we decided to split the project into two parts. One that would be a poetic telling of the book mm -hmm. using the narrative form of the book itself and then creating um, a, another component of the performance event that it would be an event, a performance event that centered around the glossary of the book. I know we'll talk about that glossary later and maybe I'll focus a little bit right now on the actual uh, the more poetic telling of the book. Uh, I have a very good friend whose name is Esther Ure, who is also one of the performers and workers on the, the content and beginning brainstorming of this. And it was actually her idea that we should make trick boxes that would open up and reveal different parts to the story, just as when you open the book, yeah. every page is like an uh, incredible surprise. And these things that which we take for granted in our everyday life is suddenly there and we remember it and we remember how we depend on all of these things for our life. So the three of us sat and we went through the book and we imagined different boxes that could be transformed for each page of the book. And then Deborah and I sat and made little models out of cardboard and paper of these three major boxes. These models were very wobbly and made with staples and scotch tape and we would have would take three hands to show how this box might change or open and become more than just a box but some kind of magical moment. They were very funny in their flimsy character <laughs> but Oh, this is where uh, a friend of ours and a wonderful carpenter named John Snyder came in. He took these ideas and he actually began constructing these performance boxes. And from paper, from oh. a paper construction model, then another artist is introduced to make something Well, wooden. John is more than he's a saying, genius. he's an artist, <laughs> he is a genius, and we took these flimsy paper that we could envision as being magical, but magic on this planet comes through a lot of work and he figured out how to draft these into actual plans and then started building and I have some pictures of him in process building these that I'd love to show you. Oh, so I'd love to see them. This is John Snyder who was the master carpenter of making these boxes. Now this first one, which looks like a closet box, we fondly call the night pillar box. And in this box is contained the night sky and the day sky. Now, when you look at it here, you see a slit down the middle. What actually happens is that this opens up and in the center there is the globe, the Earth as would be seen from space. And this entire background flips around so that it will be painted with uh, the... Remember how Deborah said that you'll, you need to look at these end papers of the book because you'll see it again and again. When this will be painted, it will be covered with those stars. And this entire background will flip around and suddenly it will be the light sky. And then, moving to the next, uh, the next page of the book, the cover of this earth will be lifted off and we will see the inside of the earth which is gravity and we'll present the child for the first time and place the child at the very top of that uh, globe and then ta-da we'll spin it around and the child won't fall off incredible gravity <laughs> The next surprise trick box we have is we call the celestial body box. And one part of this box will be used for the flaming sun and then it turns over and is used for the quiet moon and then flipped up on its end for the, the north star. 
the top of it opens up and this becomes actually a stage where a performer will stand above it performing a huge sun and there'll be a smaller puppet of a child which is sleeping, is woken by the sun, dances, goes back to sleep and then the moon comes again and again and the child sees the various phases of the moon. This is the, the window of the bedroom when the moon peeks in, the child opens the curtain, the moon peeks in, the child opens the curtain, the moon peeks in, and each time a different phase of the moon, peering in, bringing light into the bedroom at night. On the third and last box is a very large wedge-shaped box that will have a lid attached to it that's not quite made in this picture. The lid swings up and attached to that lid <coughs> And down a slit in the back is a giant piece of cloth that waves out, held by two people, that becomes the tides, that becomes high and then slowly recedes for the low tide and, and is hidden back again in the box. A canopy lifts off the lid, and hanging from that canopy are all the strings and shiny mylars of the rainstorm, of the rains that wash across the planet. That gets flipped back, and then out, hidden, out of hidden slits, pull the trees of the forest and becomes the page about photosynthesis where one by one the trees flip up and pull out of the sides and slowly the forest is made. And then John right now in this picture is inscribing a giant circle that that circle will be cut out and become a lid to a, to a circular opening that opens up, that circle becomes a spinning sun in the background, and out of that hole comes a three-tiered birthday cake where each layer spins in an opposite direction, one holding all the migrating animals who have returned, one holding the children, and one holding the mother and child. And those are the three magic trick boxes that tell the story. We've seen the wooden boxes and I could visualize the magic and the color. How, how will you put color? Will you mirror the images in the book? Have you created new designs for the protection? Well, we have used the book as our guiding force always. Mm -hmm. And of course, what you saw in the slides are these wooden, unpainted boxes. And already at the theater right now, the outsides of them have already been covered with the beautiful stars and the blue background. And as each box opens up, it will be like opening the, the page so that, for instance, the trees growing will yeah. actually look. look very similar to this page of the book. The leaves will be painted on those giant cards that you saw, and the trunks will come up as you saw them. And uh, it's very f painted very flat, like painted flat paper, as if they were cut out and then made giant to a stage proportion. Oh. How did you take the, um, the glossary of the book and the science? And you talked about changing it into the separate production. Can you describe you know, making science, now taking R to production and Well, I should backtrack science. a little. The, the, the last page of the book ends with this, um, this blessing on all children, which is, Welcome to the spinning world, the people sang, as they washed your new tiny hands. Welcome to the green earth, the people sang, as they wrapped your wet, slippery body. And as they hugged you close, they whispered into your open, curving ear, We are so glad you've come. And the book ends with a picture there. But you turn the page, and you see the mother and the singing people all around. But you turn the page, and suddenly you have a glossary that is visually cued to all the poetic verses in the first half of the story, but it takes the topics like pulling gravity, flaming sun, glowing moon, the spinning earth, the migrating animals, and it explains factually why what you have just heard lyrically is in fact true. So you have rising star, rising tides. And that's what you've turned into a midway. That's yes. right. <laughs> so for each one of these, we're building a booth that will have fabric on it, painted fabric, just like in a, in a circus when you walk and you have these beautiful, bright 
banners. Mm -hmm. and, and each one of those will have a performer inside this structure who will invite the audience to come and watch this incredible wonder. So the, the mood of the performance changes from a more sacred um, blessing into that of a circus midway with all the grandeur of our planet and these tiny moments that are incredible. And um, we, we have some slides of the midway as well. Yes. Which are, they, are they in production? Are they color? Um, have you painted them? Yes, One. there. Fun. No, no, actually, five are done. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, they're they're stunning because they're eight feet high and six feet across, so they're like little tents. But I do have a slide of a model that I'd love to show you. Oh, so. great! We'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. This is a model of one of the Midway booths. It's built one inch equals one foot, and it, so it is big enough to contain a couple of performers. And I was ecstatic that we came up with this idea because writing the glossary was extremely difficult for someone like myself who had to study a great deal. I didn't know anything about rotation before I started this book. And by studying, was able to write the glossary that you see and had many, many people and many backgrounds read through it. So each of these booths that you will see will have a vignette that will last anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes that will use the facts that you would find in the glossary to the book. And Sandy, I can't quite remember what happens in this one. Well, on the spinning earth, uh, the most important concept, I think, is that the earth is spinning and that by the spinning earth we go from darkness to light, light to dark, dark to light, light to dark. So on this earth there will be a little house which the focus will be on the house and we'll see it move from the light side of the stage to the dark and there will also be uh, images of light and dark that come up into that the frame, into the theater frame on either side so that that house actually has to pass through that light space and the dark space. And there will be 11 of these booths and for the 11 topics covered and they, this is migrating animals, the spinning earth, the flaming sun and the glowing moon at the end. One of my favorite ones is the glowing moon because we tried and tried to think how in a more flat, one-dimensional way, how can we represent this rotation of all of these planetary bodies around each other, which is, of course, huge three-dimensional uh, movement. And we finally, after trying many, many ideas of trying to make it happen on one plane, we decided that we would build a stage that would actually have a curtain that opened, and we would choose three people from the audience to come in, one who would play the sun, one who would play the earth, and one who would play the moon. And these people will have to wear funny hats, and the role of the circus master in this stage will be to actually have these people move around each other in the same kind of way that our planets move around each other. Yes, and so that shows you what the booths will look like. And I have a picture here. I think in this picture you can be begin to see how closely the production will follow the imagery in the books. Once again, the Midway booth will look a lot like the glowing moon page from the book itself. A book and a theater production will be born in Minneapolis to celebrate our planet and our individual presence. What, what next? When can we see it? What? Well, the book will, be, will come out in March of 1991, so it's, we're coming up close to holding an actual hardcover in my hand. This book has been three years in the making, so it will be quite a day when it actually arrives, and the play is... A simultaneous well, production. Yeah, the play at Heart of the Beast is planned to be the grand opening gala of this book with Deborah reading the copy for the first time to the general public. After that, it will have a one-week run in, in the Heart of the Beast theater space, which is the old Avalon Theater on Lake Street. And after that time, there will be a touring production that's mounted, and it will be traveling uh, around the city as well as around the United States. Does the production need a theater? Where, where, how portable is the production? A book is very portable. We can have that with us. The, the production that 
What do you see? Well, the production isn't quite as portable as the book, but it is. It has been designed to be somewhat and um, especially versatile for many different types of performances. There will be performances in schools, in school gymnasiums. There will be performance at the Walker Art Center for the very special audiences. There will be a performance at the Arboretum outdoors for Mother's Day. Uh, all over the state, indoors and outdoors. Yes, well, that and that makes me particularly happy because I took this book to you all because I had a feeling that Heart of the Beast would be able to take this show and this story to audiences that wouldn't have an opportunity to read it. And that, in fact, is happening. And that makes me happy. It is frequently said that it is the artists and the contemplative art on our planet who are saving us and show us who are who we are. And it's clear that Minneapolis is blessed and graced with your presence and your production and your cooperation has given us something to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Stein. And I go to Seward Elementary, and I'm in second grade. When I read the book on the day you were born, I felt like I was a baby coming into the world. I also felt like I was gravity, an animal, or the air doing my job. The day you were born is a very special book because you feel like whenever a baby is born, the whole earth gets together. The book is very colorful, and the pictures are cutouts. They're very beautiful cutouts. There's a glossary in the back of the book, and it helps you learn about the way the world works. The book also makes you feel like the animals and the whole earth are doing their job, and that I f and I feel like I should do my job. This book is a very special book. Sarah Stein of Seward Elementary School reviewing today's featured book on the day you were born. Thank you author Deborah Fraser, Pamela Holt, and Sandra Spieler. And thanks to all of you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.